My name is Rich Robin, and I'm going to show you what lack of a little TLC is going to do to your pit in 15 years. I'm going to show you the do's and don'ts and what you really need to do over the years to make sure that you have a lifetime out of your pit. Lack of TLC, a little 10 11 care, and in 15 years, which is what this pit is, this is not a gator pit, but it is a pit that a customer brought to me to see if we could recondition it, and it's I can't help it. We can't do it. The, the cost is prohibitive. But I want to use it as an example not to knock the manufacturer of this pit because it's a, it's, it's a good quality pit. It's not a gator pit quality. But what happened to it was not the manufacturer's uh, uh, design or construction of it. It was neglect from the owner. So here's what we got. You've got a quarter inch thick uh, steel pit. You have a you have a quarter inch thick steel pit. You have wooden handles, which I strongly advise against wooden handle pits. Uh, one of the reasons why is, yeah, they kind of look cool when they're all nice and look brown or hickory or cherry or mesquite wood. But what happens with wood over the years? It gets weathered. It's got heat on it. Wood screws. Just don't work after 15 years. So guess what? You're stuck with trying to figure out how you're going to get a new handle on it. If you look at the firebox, this one's already fallen off. I didn't have to make it fall off. It already did it. Once or two times, once or twice out of the year, you need to touch up your firebox. Basically what that involves is this is the hottest area of your pit. Gator pits are painted with a thousand degree paint and your firebox will never get that hot. But what happens is expansion and contraction when you fire them up. And the paint has no elasticity to it whatsoever. So when it expands and contracts, it cracks. And it's not the flaking that you see that the paint's actually burning off. Again, it's just there's no elasticity to it. It doesn't stretch and then pull back into place. So when it contracts, it cracks and that flakes off. This one, all I had to do was pull the screws out. It's history. That's what a wood handle does. They just don't work. Look at the rot inside. Wood rots. So you can bring the pit to me. We can tell you, all right, to change this out, it's going to run you about $125. You got $95 in one hour labor. We've got to cut this off. We've got to weld in a stainless steel handle. You're $125 on a handle times two. And at some point, times three. Stay away from pits with wooden handles. They don't last. This manufacturer was great with quarter inch thick steel. Again, that's not a problem. On the food chamber, on the upright, that's all still solid. The firebox, however, is history. Even though it's quarter inch thick steel, it's been neglected. Look inside this, the air vents. Gator pit doesn't put this style vent it's what we call a butterfly type vent. We don't use these types of vents on our pits because over time, they don't work at all. I can't even, I can't get this thing to unfreeze. It isn't happening. The handle, I can't get that. I can't get it to budge. That's why we don't do handles like that. The door, I'm kind of wondering if this was quarter inch thick steel to begin with now that I'm starting to look at it because that looks more like 3 16 Unless it's just rusted that bad that it's worn that thin. But you know what? The more I look at this thing, that's eighth inch. And I think they did this either, either out of 3 16 or eighth, eighth inch as well. So what I'm guessing is the firebox pipe itself was quarter inch. Everything welded outside as far as the caps were done in a thinner wall. But either way, it doesn't matter at this point because this pit's been neglected. That's a combination of ash mixed in with the interior wall of the firebox. The ash has rusted it out and it's literally flaking the interior walls out. Perfect. 
All right, what you saw falling down here is the bottom of this firebox is gone. I mean, my boot's in it, look. There it is, it's history. Again, keep your firebox cleaned out and get the ash out. What happens is ash is extremely acidic. You leave it in there, it builds up, it attracts morning moisture, dew, humidity. Inside here, you've got the heat deflector that this manufacturer used was an eighth inch thick, three inch flat bar. Might as well not even put one in there. For one, three inches isn't gonna do a whole lot. It's just for looks more than anything else to make people think that they have a heat deflector or a heat shield in there. And being eighth inch thick, that was probably the first thing that went out. The doors on this are flanged and that's good. You can see where they actually sealed the pit by the discoloration where the half inch flange is and the actual pipe itself. That's a good thing. Those are things you want to look for in a quality pit. Again, I'm not knocking the quality of this pit. This pit's where it is now more out of neglect than it is from the manufacturer. I will knock the handles though. That's a piece of crap. Earlier, earlier you saw me put my foot through the bottom of this firebox. I'm going to show you how worn this firebox is on the top as well, the top lid. And again, this is due to neglect. There you go. Hammer went right through it. There's nothing to it. That's what you don't want. Everything on this pit from here down is good. But even the neglect is causing this portion right here, about four inches in, to wear thin. Bring the camera on over here and let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, looking at the bottom of this pit, well, before we get into that, I mentioned that deflector shield. This had a deflector shield welded from here to here. It was, again, three inch by eighth inch flat bar. May as well not even been there. It did nothing to, to deflect or minimize the hot spot that's typical in offsets. It was for show, so when people look at it, they think, oh, I got a heat deflector, heat shield in here. They may as well not even had that. It, it was worthless. Getting in the, into the main chamber itself, if you look in here, I'm literally scape, scraping out, look, look at this. That's over an inch thick worth of 15 years of cooking. 15 years of cooking. That's meat juices, meat parts, food crap. 15 years worth. If you don't clean that out, at least periodically, and when I say periodically, I don't mean you have to do it every cook. But look at this, this is coming out of the bottom of the pit. That's grease. You can see it, it's still greasy. That's grease. That is somebody who never cleaned this pit out from day one. And this is what's gonna to happen to your pit if you don't give it a little tender love and care. You've gotta clean these pits out. It's no different than if you buy a car and never change the oil in it. It's gonna break. You're gonna have problems and it's gonna cost you to fix it. Why, do you, why would you expect your pit to be any different? If you don't maintain it, guess what? It's gonna break and it's gonna cost to fix it. Change the oil. Change the oil in your pit. Get rid of all that junk out of it. Make it last. If you clean these things out, you should never, ever, never have to replace this firebox on a gator pit. And I say that never. They're warranted for a lifetime. But if you don't clean it out, guess what? That's not my problem. That's your problem. That's gross. A charcoal briquette. That is a piece of charcoal. That is a charcoal briquette in here. Get this. That is what appears to be an oyster shell. 
You gotta be kidding me, an oyster shell. That is a rib bone, or part of. Hey, it's a freaking leaf. There's a leaf in here. You gotta be kidding me. This is coming out of a pit. Somebody actually cooks on this. That's out of the bottom of the chamber. Holy crap. Oh, more seashells. There's another one. You have got to be kidding me. Ah, look, leaves. More oak leaves. Um, the smell of this thing right now is probably um, burnt rubber tires is what it smells like. It smells like burnt rubber tires. Uh, I'm going to just do something that's, I know it's gross and disgusting, but I'm going to do it anyway. This, I would not want to eat food that came off of this pit. That is gross. Let's find out what's in here. It actually opens. Oh, look. We have more oak leaves. Uh, holy shit. Look at this. Yeah, I want to eat food that came off of this pit. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's the well seasoned pit, all right. It's a well-neglected barbecue pit. Well, it's got a drain valve, but the drain valve is about one inch, which is here. You see my finger coming out. If you can see my finger. The drain valve on here is about one inch around in diameter. It's like one inch pipe. Uh, inadequate, don't work, isn't going to work, it's going to do exactly what this one did, which is plug up on you. Uh, again, gator pit, the smallest valve we're putting in there, or, or drain, is going to be one and a half inch. You can opt for a two inch, but we're going to put you a one and a half inch in there. This is like maybe, you know what, it may be three quarter. I think it may be three quarter. It just isn't going to work. There's no drain to it. Uh, Greases and juices are going to coagulate in there as it gets cold and uh, it's going to plug it up. It's not going to work. But again, if you clean it out, it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, this is just horrible. Uh, get a shot inside this thing. It's just horrible. Notice too, on this side door while you're shooting at, there's no flanging here. There's not a flange around the door seam cut whatsoever, which means he's leaking heat and smoke, and you can tell by the way it's discolored. Uh, again, the pit's quarter inch thick still, and that's great, but there are things that you can do that in design that makes these things last longer, even with the neglect that this one has. Uh, I'm not gonna get in detail on a video for the internet to show you our interior of our pits because I don't want every John Doe world out there copying my stuff. I've been doing this since I was 14 years old. And if somebody wants to copy the interior design of my pit, they can buy one and have at it. Uh, but there are things that you can do that minimize even a customer's neglect of a barbecue pit that will make the firebox last longer, make the main chamber last longer. Uh, because we know not everybody cleans pits out. It's just, that's just gonna happen. Not everybody's gonna clean a pit out. 
All right, to add, long, to add longevity to your firebox or your pit overall in general, is Gator Pit makes a tool that's called an ash rake, or we call it an ash rake. We make it about 36 inches long. This is 48 because it goes in a longer pit. But our average backyard pit is going to get about 36 inch long ash rake. Stainless steel cool touch handles, so it doesn't get hot on you. It's also easier to grab because that's a half inch rod. This gives you a bigger handle. We cut the con we cut the, the, the quarter inch thick still here to contour the interior of the, the barrel. So 16 inch, 20 inch, 24 inch, 30 inch, 36 inch. This is going to make uh, match the interior of the, the, the barrel. This is used to pull that nasty old ash out a day or two after you cook. So you clean that ash out so you don't have this happening. This is all it takes. If you use this to get the ash out of your firebox, you won't have this problem in 15 years, 10 years, or 20 years. This simple tool, 55 bucks, is gonna save you thousands of dollars. So yeah, 55 bucks versus thousands of dollars in repairs or reconditioning, or go buy a new barbecue pit when this happens to you. Because when you get to this point, you're buying a new pit. I can't fix this. I performed a lot of good things over the years, but miracles are never done. Never done a miracle before. Ain't gonna happen. Again, I didn't want to get into knocking this particular pit. It is another manufacturer's pit. No point in naming who it is, it doesn't matter. But I wanted to use it because it shows more than anything neglect. And what neglect does to a barbecue pit, and I don't care who made it. If you don't maintain it, like you do your car and everything else that you have, your house, guess what? It's gonna cost you money down the road. It's, it's, a, it's just gonna happen. A couple of hours a year will save years on your barbecue pit. And that's all it takes. A couple of hours a year will save years on the longevity of your barbecue pit, no matter who maintained it, no matter what the wall thickness is. The things you do wanna look for, quarter inch thick steel, stainless steel handles, an interior design from a custom manufacturer like Gator Pit that knows what it takes in the interior design of a barbecue pit that prevents this from happening. And there are things that we do to our pits, to all of our pits. I don't care if it's a $500 pit that we get or make or a $50,000 pit that we make. There are things that we do to the interiors of our pits that prevent or minimize this from happening if you neglect your pit. The point is, don't neglect your pit. But we know people do. People aren't going to clean these things out. It just isn't going to happen. And most people don't. So that's why we do what we do to our gator pits on the inside that's going to help you, that person that's not going to clean this thing out on a regular basis, to minimize this from happening to your gator pit. If you see an area of your pit that is starting to get surface rust on it, that's the time to touch it up. Hand sand it with a little sander, a little 36 inch grid, or 36 inch, hand sand it. 50 grit, 80 grit, take that surface rust off, get a little wire brush, knock that off. Go to Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart. They all sell high heat barbecue paint or stove paint. All those places sell them, Ace Hardware. Go there, spend five bucks, buy the touch up paint and touch up that surface rust area. Do it when you notice it. Don't do it two years, three years, four years, five years from now. Do it when you notice it. Your pit, if you maintain it, will look as new 10 years from now as it did the day it drove off my lot. I've got customers that have had pits since I was 14 years old. That's 30 something years ago. They're still cooking on them because they maintained them. And it doesn't take much. I'm Rich Robin. I own Gator Pit Texas Custom Barbecue Pits in Houston, Texas. I'm showing you what you don't want to do to your pit. I don't care who made it. There's a lot of manufacturers out there. There's a lot of difference in quality of steel by the manufacturers in there. You can't fix that. It's gone, it's history. This is gonna go in my recycle trailer over there. We can't fix it. Don't let this happen to your pit. Again, Gator Pit does things that minimize that this, this is gonna to happen to your Gator Pit. This is not a Gator Pit, okay? Keep that in mind. Our pits can take a little more abuse than what this one right here is, or has. But it's like a, a car. You don't change the oil, don't expect the motor to run forever. Just a little TLC, and it's, you're going to enjoy that barbecue pit forever. See ya.